today I'm going to be uh, taking a look at this little light bulb here. Um, it's it's 124, yeah, 120 volt G8 uh, shape style, 40 watt equivalent, 4 watts actual um, light bulb. And it's in this tiny little form factor, which is, you know, the G8. And I didn't pay that much for it. I paid two bucks for it because it was on clearance at the end of the year. Um, so I'm not afraid to tear it down. Besides, I don't actually have a fixture that holds one of these. But what I'm confused about is how did they get the circuitry to drive um, an LED bulb from a 120 volt source and make it dimmable and fit it into that package. So what does it say about this thing here? 450 lumens, uh, 3000 Kelvin, so that's a warm white, uses four watts. I suppose I could test that. Be a little bit freaky putting bare power onto that. Hmm. Hang on. Okay, here's what I've come up with. Um, just one of these little terminal blocks, little spring terminal blocks. It says it's good for 250 volts. So, even if it's lying, I'm at about half of that. And just plug it into my little tester here. Just set that over there. So, my line voltage is currently 124 volts. There, it lights up nice and bright. Drawing 41 milliamps, 42 milliamps, with a power factor of 0.9. That's surprisingly good. I was expecting, well, I mean, a lot of these cheap bulbs have like a 0.5 or less power factor, so that's not bad. Low and high. Where's the actual wattage? 4.7 watts. Okay, and it claims on the card to be 4 watts, so that's reasonable enough. So the actual bulb itself says that it is dimmable, 40 milliamps, 120 volts, 4 watts, 150 lumens, 3000 Kelvin, which is pretty much what it said on the package. So the construction of it, it's a little hexagon with so six columns of eight LEDs plus two more on the top just for good measure. Um, there's a couple little solder blobs coming in and off or in and out of this. And those run right, oh, one of them runs right down to the base. One of them seems to go into these little circuit boards. And these circuit boards seem to be um, a three, a single, or a three panel circuit board folded over and then another one over there. Huh. I wonder how those are laid out inside there. I'm just going to try and slightly deform this plastic globe and hope that it releases. This little base material, it's not quite your usual plastic. It feels slightly ceramic-y, but I don't think it's really ceramic. I don't know what it is exactly. So is that going to come loose. Arr. This is going to take a little bit more violence, I think. Oh. Coming. There we go. So that was held in there with a little ring of some kind of glue. Okay. But now we have this guy. And yeah, listen to that. That sounds kind of ceramic-y. I just noticed something that I didn't notice earlier. Remember I said that this was like a circuit board folded over in three panels? I didn't realize it was still attached to there. And there. So it is actually just a single circuit board that unfolds. So this panel folds up flat, this panel folds up flat, and then that whole thing folds up and sticks out that way. Huh. So I wonder if those two pins, hmm, 
no those two pins don't go straight to there I guess that makes sense too so you can sort of see the wire from this running down inside there a little bit and this one's a little bit more clear that wire there runs down to the bottom hmm may have to get a little bit more violent on this thing oh that wasn't what I was expecting okay so I hammered these pins down and that pushed this up here so I have broken it so let's just pull that guy out there so there is those two pins or those two uh, going up to the top of this guy here and I guess that then fed down onto the rest of these oh that base material is molded right up inside of there let me see if I can pry these guys off without destroying them too horribly my spudger hmm this is an interesting mechanical construction beyond the electrical curiosity so that folds up like that that folds up like that and then that middle point would have been permanently or would have been attached to that originally and also probably electrically let's see if I can get this guy right off here okay so there's that little hexagonal column in there that's just double-sided foam tape that's holding that together all right and that one's going to be the same as this one so I've done a little bit of poking around here and I've discovered that these lights light at three-ish volts. So right now I've got my current limiting set for 40 milliamps on this thing. And as you can see, that 40 milliamps is at 2.8 volts, basically. So these are just a standard white three-volt LED. They're not multiple chips per. So that's one thing uh, the other thing is there's 50 LEDs in the thing in total uh, 24 there 24 there and two more on top and how are, let me just draw this out quick well no I don't really have to um, the voltage comes from the power supply up through these two pins on the side here and then goes on a trace that goes over the edge down onto here and then this is all one big series string it goes like this all the way down this way zigging and zagging then across the bottom and then just zigzags its way up this side here and then it goes back up through another trace on top of the board through these two leds down another trace down this side and does that same zigzag thing down and then back up again and then back to the power supply so that's what's going on there so um let's do a quick here we got 50 leds multiplied by a well let's say 2.8 volts that's 140 volts dc so what can we see on here db one's obviously a bridge rectifier um f130 and a zero so that's like a what, 30 ohm fuse or 30 ohm resistor but it's marked f1 so it's obviously a fusible resistor uh we got a d1 diode there uh a little resistor in parallel with the capacitor that's good what's the capacitor 160 volts 33 microfarads okay and so that's pretty clearly in parallel with the leds just to smooth them out a little bit and we got a little q1 transistory job there which is a pt 4541 g i'll have to go and look that up and then on the back side of the board we've got a couple of little resistors there which are fairly low values um 
What do we got here? 9.1 ohms and 51 ohms. Okay. And then what is this little transistor looking dude? PT4515G. Wait a minute. PT4515G. So we got a. What is that? A SOT23 or something version and a TO something or other version of the same chip. Hmm. So while I was uh, figuring this thing out, I looked up the that chip that shows up in a couple of different places. And it is, in fact, an LED driver chip. It's not a transistor, even though it sort of looks like one. PT4515. So it is available in multiple packages. And here is just the basic circuit of it. It's just an LED driver. Um, you throw the bridge rectifier after your AC, optional smoothing capacitor, uh, there's your sense resistor, and here is your string of LEDs. <laughs> it's that easy. Okay, so it can run on 120 or up to 220 volt, okay, and 60 milliamps or less. Yeah, we're doing that, that's good. Okay, so here we go, voltage output anywhere from uh, 70 to 150 volts, okay. And what do we got here? Six and a half volts is the minimum output. Here's what's going on inside. A little oscillator, a little dropout uh, uh, regulator. Creates the reference to this comparator and a MOSFET, reasonable enough. There is a calculation for the resistor. Aha, and here is a, a few different configurations you can run them in. So if you need extra current, you can just parallel them up. Okay, that's useful. And down here at the bottom of the data sheet, we find a circuit which is almost exactly what we have. The only difference is we've got a bleeder resistor across the capacitor. And actually, that's the only distant difference. And then this here is 50 LEDs. So this saves me having to draw the thing out because and actually I had started to draw it out. But now that I find this, this is exactly what it is. Huh. Okay, so it is literally a textbook circuit. Um, this resistor and this one are those two little surface mount resistors. Um, this diode is coming right off the bridge rectifier. This is the smaller surface mount package. This is the larger TO252 package. That is our 33 microfarad capacitor. It's got 470K bleeder resistor across it, just so you don't get zorped. This is a the surface mount equivalent of a 1N4007, which is a 1000 volt 1 amp. That is a bridge rectifier because it is. Ours has a little series fusible resistor for 30 ohms right there. Other than that, this is the exact circuit that we've got. That's a kind of a clever little circuit. And this is how far I'd, I'd gotten in uh, figuring it out before I, before I found on the last page of that data sheet pretty much the same schematic. Oh well, it was a good exercise. Clever little guy here. I'm almost upset that I broke it. But I suppose I could uh, put it back together. Well, I don't know if I can solder back onto this thing. I think I'll just keep these LEDs for uh, for spare parts, because you never know. Remember that other LED light bulb I replaced a couple of the chips on several months back? I'll, I'll link it up there if I remember. Yeah, that's a good reason to have a handful of these things lying around. And that's an interesting, an interesting material. He said, I don't think it's ceramic, but it might be. It's not plastic. Huh. Wonder if that, wonder how good ceramic like that is at dissipating heat. Probably better than if it was plastic. And of course, it's a good electrical insulator. Well, that was fun. 
Thanks for coming along with me for the ride. If you've got any questions or comments down below as usual, I'll talk to you later. Oh, this beer. I know somebody's going to ask. Uh, it is Get Up Off of That Thing. A soulful brown ale from Devil May Care Brewing. I've had this one before and it is nice. It's it's about as uh, light colored as I as I like to go, but it is a very nice little uh, nice little beer. And it's uh, brewed at the brewery, which is pretty much the closest to my house, which is also a bonus. Yeah, thanks a lot. I'll talk to you later.